All games need stats in some way, shape, or form, whether that's just the speed of your player as they run and jump, or it's full-blown RPG stats for enemies and NPCs and armor and weapons and all that good stuff. In my project, it's no different. I needed stats for my enemies, I needed stats for the buildings and other units the player might use and interact with while they play the game. And that's what I want to talk about in this video, is how I created my stat structure, share that with you, and maybe give you some ideas of how you can create yours in your project. A good way to implement stats could be to create a non-mono behavior class, call it stats, and then have a public field for each type of stat that's going to be needed in the game. Then any class that's going to need stats, whether that's an enemy or a player or, or armor or weapons or whatever that might be, can then have a variable of that stats type, and you're generally good to go. As an added bonus, this is a good way to enforce some composition over inheritance type structure in your project. And while this is good and probably good enough for most games, I knew that I wanted more. I wanted something more generic for my project. I wanted units to have different types of stats. I wanted a quick and easy way to access the value of those stats without creating a bunch of properties or public functions to get the or get access to those individual stats. And lastly, and this is a big one, and it's going to be a subject of a follow-up video. I wanted that stat system to easily integrate with an upgrade system that that upgrade system will work with similar ease and adaptability. So I did a little digging around to see how other folks have been doing this. Maybe that's how you got here. What I stumbled upon was the idea of putting my stats into a collection, more specifically into a dictionary. And this does a bunch of good things. The key in that dictionary is an enum, the type of that stat, and the value is the value of that individual stat. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with uh, setting values in the inspector, but for me, this is a win all day long. It's easy to change what type of stats a unit might have, and it's easy to change the value of that stat. Right there in the inspector, piece of cake, easy to do. And this, again, was a crucial piece of the puzzle, given that not all units are going to have the same type of stats. Farmers and defensive towers are going to have very different functionality, and they're going to need very different stats, and this is an easy way to do that. Once I had my stats in a collection, I knew I needed some sort of container for that stat itself, and I chose to use a scriptable object. If you're new to scriptable objects, I'll put a link up here to a video I did a while back on the Serenix channel describing what they are and how they work. I think they're great. I think they're awesome. What this does, what a scriptable object is going to do for me, though, is it's going to keep my data separate from the logic that is using that data, which I like. It also means that the stats container is an asset that can be shared with any object in the project. And what this means is that, for example, every tower that I might place in my game is going to have the same stats, which is great. That's not necessarily that profound. You could use a prefab to do the same thing. But it also means that if I, say, want to hover over that uh, tower and have a pop-up menu show me the stats, or I have some sort of build menu that's got stats of an object, that UI can access the same scriptable object and have the same data. I don't have to reproduce the data, don't have to copy it. I know it's always synced up. This also means that upgrades can be reasonably easy. I can apply that upgrade to the scriptable object for, say, the towers, and then every tower, since it's accessing that same scriptable object, will see that upgrade. I don't have to hunt through the scene for every tower and call a function on each tower to change that stat. When I add a new tower, I don't have to make sure that I'm applying those stats. It's just reaching out to that same scriptable object asset, and it's got the same values. It also means that if I apply an upgrade, say, in level 1, it's going to follow me through to level 2 and level 3 because that upgrade was applied to an asset, not to a scene object. But it's also worth noting that scriptable objects are not a save system. So it turns out I had a few things wrong. Scriptable objects definitely should not and cannot be used as a save system, but some of the nuances of why I didn't have quite right. If you want to dig into that a little bit more, I'll put a link to a Code Monkey video down below where he addresses some of those issues. We will talk more about this when we get to the upgrade system in the upcoming video, which is where we're going to run into a few issues. So we're not using scriptable objects as a save system, but we can use them to transfer information from one scene to another, which is pretty great. Putting my stats in a dictionary with the enum for the key and the value holding the stat value makes for a quick and easy method to get access to a given stat. No need to create properties. All I need is one public function that takes in the stat type and returns the value. And this continues to work if I add or remove a stat type, making my system that much more robust. This approach does mean that a stat could be requested and it isn't in the dictionary. If this is the case, I return zero and send an error to the console. 
Now, ideally, this isn't happening, but with this implementation, nothing breaks in the game. And as the developer, I get a message letting me know that I've either asked for the wrong stat or I haven't created that stat type for a given unit. Again, nice, clean, and easy to use. All right, so that's really pretty much it. That's the stats system. Again, I've talked a lot about an upgrade system. That's going to come in a follow up video. But if you've been watching closely, there are a couple potential issues with this system. And I want to talk about those. And I want to talk about a couple potential fixes for each of those problems. You may have noticed that my scriptable object is actually a serialized scriptable object, which is not a class built into Unity. Instead, it's part of Odin Inspector, and it allows the serialization and display of dictionaries in the Unity Inspector. Without this class, you can't see the dictionary in the Inspector, and you can't add stats to the Inspector. It's a potential problem, and there are at least two workarounds short of buying Odin. First fix, use a list instead of a dictionary. To do that, you're going to need to create a custom class that has fields for the stat type and the stat value. You would then need to alter the get stat to iterate through the list and find the results. It's a bit messier, but not too bad. If you're concerned about the performance of a list versus a dictionary, well, there's definitely a difference. The extra time to iterate through a list of 5, 10, or 20 stat types is marginal at best for most use cases. Fix number two, if you insist on using a dictionary, the second fix would be to use your list to populate a dictionary at runtime and then use that dictionary during play mode. This could be done in an initialize function or the first time that a stat is requested. A bit messier, but definitely doable. The second big issue is the scriptable object itself. Now, it does a lot of good things for us, but some of those good things can actually be problematic. For example, having every object of a certain type have the same stats is a good thing. Unless, of course, that stat needs to be for a local instance, something like hit points or health. In that case, we have a problem, and I've got a few ideas, a few suggestions to get around that and fix those issues. The first fix is to have each unit instantiate a copy of the scriptable object when the unit is created. This makes the original scriptable object just a template, and each object will have its own copy. This breaks the every unit shares the same type of stats idea a little bit, but it means that every unit will start with the same stats, which is a good thing. This also effectively means that the scriptable object tracks max values or starting values, while the object itself tracks the current value of the stat. This is the method that I used in my project to prevent all the objects of a certain type from sharing things like health. But unfortunately, this is likely to break my upgrade system moving forward. So let me propose fix number two. For stats that need to be local or for a particular instance, things like health or hit points, you could create an additional dictionary on the scriptable object. And then when that unit is created, it could copy that list or dictionary onto the instance. Then functions such as do damage that change the value of a local or instance stat simply change the local value instead of changing the value on the scriptable object. The second fix, while a bit more complicated, is likely my preferred solution moving forward, as a scriptable object still defines the stats for a particular object type, but individual objects can control their own individual stats if needed. So there you go. That's how I'm doing stats for my project. This is going to be followed up by a second video looking at how I'm doing my upgrade system that's going to work with this stat system. At the end of the day, I hope that was interesting and better yet useful for you and your project. And until next time, happy game designing.